Skywalker. Um, so this is like this is the network that brings all these things together. Um, so from concept to test net, basically we're trying to solve problems. So originally Bitcoin, um, Bitcoin had some issues with uh, you know it's supposed to be privacy, you're supposed to be anonymous. That turned out to not really be the case. As people learned over time, there are ways to, uh, you know, to track and trace you know, transactions and stuff like that. So um, the idea was, you know, how, how do we uh, implement things that can change that? And so one of the ways to do that is to literally just create a network that doesn't allow the things that make that possible on the current internet. Um, so, hence Skywire. Um, so, store of value versus the internet. I mean, the idea behind this is if your data, your, your personal information, um, we all know now that it's valuable to you. Um, and you know, with data breaches and stuff like that, uh, your data has some kind of value, obviously, because everybody wants it, right? So, what is it worth to you? Is, is your personal data, is it worth protecting or not? Because if it's worth protecting, then you should do something, you should take some action to protect it. And so that's where Skywire comes in, because basically, your internet traffic can't be traced. That's the way this works. Um, so is this a new internet? Yes. Why is it? Well, you know, just like you see in the image, the idea is that, theoretically, if everyone had their own node, or Skyminer, let's just say, and you have an antenna, then basically that, if you're connecting to other people that have the same thing, you're connecting on a, a basically a private network. So Skywire, in this sense, is sort of like a private network. If you were the internet, you would say, oh, what's that over there? Well, that's Skywire. It's sort of, sort of like a private network that the internet doesn't have access to. It's like being exclusive. Um, so is Skywire software or hardware? It's both. So and you may be familiar, but you know, of course, you see we have the Skyminer there. Um, there's official Skyminers. There's also, you can build them yourself. But no matter how you do it, um, it's a combination of hardware and software, and it's configurable. Um, there are, you know, there's lots of things you can do with it, but basically it's both. Um, and what's under the hood? Basically, uh, well, we're gonna get into that, but uh, basically what's under the hood is uh, a routing protocol that's highly customized, and Skywire itself actually is a network protocol. It's a very advanced network protocol. It has similar characteristics to some other protocols that exist, but there are some things that have been taken out that allow for some anonymity, or in that case, privacy. Uh, Software-defined networking. So one of the principles, uh, well actually, the framework for building Skywire is really based on software-defined networks. So what does that mean? Um, generally, if you have a network, it's like hardware-based, right? Well, uh, recently, in the recent years, uh, something called software-defined networking has come out, and that's more where you have like a software that you install on a computer or a server. You might be familiar with things like VMware or Parallels or something like that. Um, so the idea is that you can use this networking software to create a, an additional network on top of the network that you're already on, and then it's, it's a fully usable network, but it's separate, and this can be used to, to uh, separate things like data, you, you know, and you would do that for privacy reasons, um, or there are various reasons why you uh, create separate networks. 
So the idea is that with Skywire, you're creating a separate network from the internet. And since we're, Skywire is the new internet, it's separate from the current internet. So in the same sense, just like you would use software-defined networking to create a separate network in your office or in your home, Skywire is used to create a separate internet. Uh, MPLS, multi-protocol label switching. So if I had to describe what's under the hood, this is about as close as I can get to it. So Skywire itself is not MPLS, but it's similar in the sense that it uses a, a, the same characteristics to uh, forward packets. And because of that, uh, it's that's where we get the anonymity. That's where we get the, the inability to trace the source of the traffic. Now, why does that matter? Um, well, if you can't trace the source of the traffic, then you can't see where it came from. And in the crypto world, that translates into uh, you know fungible and private transactions, things like that. Um, public key addressing. Uh, so what happens with in Skywire is in a traditional network, you have something called TCP/IP. All right, this is the traditional networking protocol. All right, um, what Skywire has done is really knocked off the IP part. Right, so we have TCP, but beyond that, we have public key addressing. So what that means is, uh, if, if you're familiar with, I'm sure we're all familiar with crypto in this room, um, like a Bitcoin address or any cryptocurrency has like an address. The address is really a public key. Right. Um, some other things. If you get into some other blockchain related things, you have objects on the blockchain. They also, any object would have like a public key. It looks similar to, uh, say, a Bitcoin address or something like that. What happens is, in Skywire, every node and any object on the blockchain, so any node of the network and any object on the blockchain would have its own public key. That means that it's accessible and you can communicate with it via its public key across the network. This is something that only exists in Skywire. All right, node selection. Um, another way that you can control your connection or your internet is to decide where you're gonna connect it. Well, how do you do that? We have something called discovery. So basically, when you get on Skywire, you can sort of look for other nodes. And we have a system where, right now, we have a system where you, know, you can see the location somewhat. They, they sort of like declare where they, where they are. So for example, you can look at the node list and it'll say, well, here's one in New York, here's one in Amsterdam, here's one in France. You can choose which one you want to connect to and literally all your traffic you can, can now be sent out through that node. So you might be familiar with Tor, it's a similar concept. It happens in a different way, but it's a similar concept. So basically you're routing your traffic from somewhere else. But this is a cooperative effort, right? Because if we're all using Skywire, then we're all saying, hey, let's help each other. That's what this is about. SOX5, um, not a new technology, um, but it's a very good one. Uh, SOX5 is what creates the tunnel between nodes, and then in there you have this layer of Skywire, which is an MDLS type protocol, and just in terms of networking. And um, before I get off this slide, just to give you a visual, um, in Skywire and similarly in MDLS, what happens is when a packet comes across the network, it'll hit a node and it'll say, oh, here's the information, here's a label. Where I, where I came from, get rid of it. It says, now I'm here, I have a label for that, and here's the label saying where I'm going. It goes to the next one, it says, now I'm here, it strips off the old one, and here's where I'm going. So it always knows where it's going, and it always knows where it is, and it always says, get rid of the old one. So by doing it that way, you're not. Skywire reward system. Uh, this one is, um, this one's popular. So, Monetization. One of the way one of the ways to make this work and to have an ecosystem and what we effectively call a closed loop economy is to have monetization in some form. Um, you know, you want to have some kind of a way to facilitate payment or store value. Now this has been tried before, um, and it works with you know there are some other blockchain projects that have done this, um, but basically what we've done is uh, used a pay paper packet with, um, actually it's Skycoin hours, um, we changed it. Uh, but basically the paper packet is the idea that when you route someone else's traffic, you get paid for it, right? So 
you know, what, whatever they're doing, if they're accessing, if they're just simply, if you're simply tapping your traffic, or if they're accessing something, let's say you have a SkyMiner, and you have, say, uh, an application running on it, and they want to access it, it could be a web application. And you can do whatever you want. You know, I mean, that application could be something that's, you know, from, uh, like, a native CX thing that comes out of the Sky 20 community, or it could even be just something like a web app that you built yourself. It doesn't matter, you can still host it on the network. You're not limited in that way, and it can still be accessible by your public key, right? So you're, so in that sense, you're not even going off IP address, right? There's a totally different uh, namespace when you're accessing people's nodes. Um, so the idea is that when you're doing this kind of stuff, uh, it's paid for packing, so effectively, if you're providing somebody a service, you get paid. You're taking a service from someone else, you get paid per package. So there's their incentive for node operators, basically. You know, you can get paid or you pay, but you know, we're doing this with a parallel currency. That's what Skycoin coin hours is. It's parallel currency, similar to, uh, as Caleb said, similar to uh, gas for NEO or Ethereum. Um, and this is just another way to, for you to have sort of a commerce going on with each other. Because we're just a community of people, a community of people helping each other. And we have a way to create an economy around that without even stepping outside the system. Remember, we have Skycoin too. But we haven't even gotten there yet. We're still in coin hour. But with the ability to trade for Sky or potentially trade for other things like Bitcoin or any other currency, whatever happens in the future, there's always that ability to monetize it and you know see real rewards for this. Uh, universal provider basically just as I explained, you know, if you're providing a service, you get paid. If you're taking a service, you pay. Uh, testnet versus mainnet. So the difference between testnet and mainnet is that in testnet, um, we're basically hosting the servers, like discovery, uh, because we need to do this in a way that facilitates a reliable network. Okay, so we have discovery servers that you basically connect to and facilitate this. Uh, Skywire protocol across five, five proxies. And this is how it happens. Um, so right now on testnet, you can use the SOX5 proxy basically as a VPN. Um, and uh, yeah, you can use it as your, um, essentially a free VPN. Um, and uh, So, and then also the way you get paid. All right, so the way the way you get, uh, there's a, you know, I'll go to the next slide because that's a lot easier to explain. So in, in testnet, uh, so when you have, uh, so in testnet we have uh, subsidized reward payments, okay? So what that means is if you have a, a, a miner right now, whether it's an official miner or a do-it-yourself miner, basically what's happening is we're gonna subsidize those payments. Why? Because we want you to use it, right? So this, shared effort between us, creating this worldwide network of wireless nodes, we have to facilitate this in some way, right? So the idea is that we want to reward you now. So the pay per packet uh, is what is going to come into the mainnet, right? We don't have pay per packet now, but basically when mainnet hits, we'll have pay per packet, there's a, you know, there's a way to monetize that and get the payments back to yourself. Uh, so on testnet, we actually subsidize the payments. So whether you have an official or a do-it-yourself miner, Basically, once you set it up and you get it on the network, there's a whitelisting system. You just sign up, put in your keys, something like that, and now you're in the system. And uh, as long as you have 75% uh, uptime per month, so every 30 days, as long as you have 75% uptime, uh, you'll get your reward payments. Um, so getting started, uh, I would recommend you just go to our Telegram group. So you can just go to uh, Skycoin um, in Telegram. I believe it's that what's Caleb, what's the link? T, t, t me slash Skywire. We'll go to Skywire or do you want to go to Skycoin? Either. Either, right. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, so basically that's, you know, getting started, go to our community. We have an arsenal of people at your fingertips. We have a world class support team ready 24 hours a day to help you. Beyond that, we have a community of people that also are very technically inclined and are very willing to jump in there and help you anytime you need it. This is not that complicated. I can, I promise you it's not that complicated. Um, even if you're not experienced with Linux, they can still get you through that process. Um, on the flip side of that, if you order the, an official SkyMiner, um, there are images that are, the process is a little bit easier to do than the, 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 the do-it-yourself. 
But other than that, you, know, you have an entire team that will help you either way. So whether it's official or do it yourself, uh, there's always going to be somebody there to help you. Uh, so um, this is what we're here for, to build the new internet. And so what I'd like you to take away from this is that if we, if we want to take control of our future and our destiny, then let's do this and let's do this together. By building a network that will actually create what we are calling the new internet. Okay, so I'm going to go into the hardware show. Um, wow, wait a minute. So we have our bike quad Yagi. Right, so this is a Yagi style antenna. It's called bike quad because of the little uh, helix shape you see. Um, so it's a eight element uh, bike quad Yagi. So let me just explain real quick. The purpose of us building the hardware is so that we can provide good hardware that you have access to, but also at an affordable price. That's huge. Because it's not like you can't buy things like this elsewhere, but when you start looking at the pricing, it can get astronomical. You know, if you just happen to want an antenna that has good, good signal, good range, and it's reliable, and will do what you want, um, and this of this quality, we are producing this kind of hardware, and all this hardware you see, uh, you know, the antennas, and even the, even the hardware wallet, the whole idea is that you can get these items or these, you know, these devices inexpensively. So this is also to help foster the growth of this network because if it's too expensive, you know, it's just going to rule some people out. I mean, it's going to eliminate some people from the process. So this particular, uh, this particular antenna is good as a medium range, and well, uh, I'm sorry, it's good as an all-around antenna, uh, both for short range and long range. Um, it's, so this is actually the one that I find is probably going to give you the best all-around performance uh, for uh, even for home and commercial. Alright. Okay, Yagi 6 element. So uh, here's our Yagi 6 element. So as you can see, it's quite a different design. Um, and you know, again, it does similar it, it does a similar thing. It works off a certain frequency range. Um, I would say this is this is better for a, a you know more of a short range point-to-point uh, -point connection. Um, actually, in fact, all these Yagi's are really meant to be for point-to-point -point connections, like long range. So, for example, you know these antennas are going to get you anywhere from you know five to ten kilometers. That's sort of the range you can get. Uh, so, but with this antenna, I would um, I would use this for more like I would use this for like super long range. Maybe like maybe the long range point to point connection, but not not super far. If you're going miles, then I would go with the uh, the Yagi 13. So this is our Yagi 13 element, all right. And uh, all these antennas, you know, like they're manufactured with you know, you've got your SMA connector on the end, so it's easily attachable to um, any wireless capable device that has an SMA connector. And uh, this. This, uh, and this antenna is really good for long range. So if you're trying to do like 10, 10 kilometer ranges, you would use something like this. It's gonna get you there and very reliably. All right, uh, K antenna. So I know this one is a favorite of a lot of people. Um, you know, this, this, uh, this style of antenna has been used quite extensively uh, in the, um, movies and stuff like that. Um, but it is actually very useful and very effective. And um, surprisingly, it gives a really good range, especially in the 5.8 range. Um, so, and the idea for us is to, you know, actually utilize this style of antenna. And this is really good for like, for your local, um, you know, point to point, well, like a short range. I wouldn't use this for long range. But for short range, this is excellent, uh, excellent antenna to use. Now, our, our uh, most uh, popular antenna. So this is the parabolic antenna. The idea behind this antenna is, of course, it, it looks the most impressive. Um, but uh, as you can see, it's a movable antenna, all right? 
Uh, it's motorized. Give you a little kind of a view there. All right, so this antenna was created with the idea in mind that in the future, you know, we're gonna have some sort of uh, automated, uh, automated uh, signal tracking. So the idea is that two of these antennas could find each other and stay connected, all right? Um, or you could have, say, like a list of uh, a network that you're connected to or a miner that you're connected to through their antenna, and they would sort of like find each other. Or let's say, let's say uh, one of your neighbors, uh, their antenna goes down, you know, and you just happen to have another one that you connect to sometimes too. The idea is that perhaps it'll find your, your other neighbor, right, and it'll lock onto that one automatically and uh, pick up the signal there. The idea for that is just simply, you know, reliability purposes, you know, so that, you know, if your signal goes down, perhaps you can find another one. So this is the idea behind it. That part is still in development, um, but, you know, still we want to show people what it is at this point, because hardware-wise, you know, we're done with it. And similarly to the other antennas, you know, we're looking at between the five and 10 uh, kilometer range. And now we have this, uh, let me take you on the, oh no, we did leave the sky miner off. But I think, Caleb, you already covered the sky miner pretty much, so. Um, all right, so listen, uh, thank you for joining. Here's all our contact information. Uh, also, Caleb and I, if you want, you can come to us. We'll, you know, we'll give you our contact information and uh, you're more than welcome to contact us anytime. We're also going to have this video distributed online, so if you missed anything today, don't worry about it. Right? Uh, we, you know, you'll be able to get all this information later once we get the video done, and you know, you'll have another chance to hear all of this. Um, so uh, I think yeah. So we're in Q and A now, basically. So does anybody have any questions about anything? Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I have one more thing to show you guys. All right. Hang on. Caleb, as I said, you know, without the internet, there's, we have that little issue, so uh, give me a second. That's the liquid one So I wanted to give you guys like a, a, a demo of the bandwidth, but I can't do that right now uh, because, of course, I can't connect out to a remote zone. But basically, uh, so this is your management console uh, in Skywire, right? So as you can see here, uh, you, know, you have sort of like a public key, as I was saying, and you have like an app key. So for example, like your app key, like if you have any kind of application running, once you register it with the blockchain, or you register it with the, in Skywire, basically. Um, you're gonna have that object or that node or that application, it's gonna have some kind of a key associated with it, right? So for example, like this is a SOC 5 proxy, here's your app, right? So when somebody connects to your node, they're not connecting to your IP address, they're connecting to that number, that really long annoying number, but there it is, right? So, you know, that, that this is one of the things that makes Skywire uniquely different from any other uh, network networking project, there, you know, there's some other things out there that are trying to do similar stuff that we're doing, but this is this is the way that we keep uh, this within the blockchain ecosystem. It's, it's the, also the way that I can show you that this is actually um, on the blockchain, right? So, and uh, what, so like once, once the ecosystem is pulled together and everything's on Skywire, um, also another thing I have to tell you is that um, also Obelisk is gonna be involved in some level. So you're gonna have, so yeah, you're gonna have sort of a, a pulling together of things with the ecosystem once we have the network um, running publicly, right? Um, so you're gonna have Skywire and you're gonna have integration with Obelisk and CXO, CXO 2.0, actually. Um, so basically, this is what you're gonna see happening. Now, uh, if I could connect to another node and show you the traffic running through it, what would end up happening is you would then be able to see your bandwidth, right? So this is how it's metered, right? So you would you'd be able to see in real time 
you know, how much traffic is either going in or out of your zone. Um, and there's some other things you can do too. Like I might be able to start up. You can uh, just start up uh, SSH. Um, okay, so through this console, you also have the ability to control your zone, right? So. Um, Oh, another thing that, you know, if you're not sure, if you don't know already, uh, we're using a, basically pies, like Raspberry Pis, Orange Pies. The official, the official binaries have Orange Pies, it's a different manufacturer. But uh, you can, you know, you can do all this stuff with Raspberry Pis, and there's some other similar, uh, uh, similar boards to the Raspberries. Uh, you can run this on, okay, yeah, see? So basically, so I just fired up uh, SSH, right? So here we go. Here's another app. Cool, right? So now, so, so that's that, but here's another thing you can do, right? So you can get into your terminal. So it's a lot to take in, 
Um, you know, if you're somebody that's you know, in, in tech or in the IT industry or something like that, this, this will make a bit of sense. But what I can tell you is that it's definitely going to be beneficial if you learn how this stuff works. Um, and like I said, we have a great community of people that are willing to help you learn any aspect of this. Right? So, and you know, like I come from the IT industry. Um, so I can tell you, like, I, I, I've dealt with end users that are like, you know, this is complicated. Honestly, it's not that complicated. If you're a little tech savvy, you're going to go a long way with this. If you're not tech savvy, you know, um, well, all I can say is give it a shot. Let us, let us show you. And um, I, I think you'll be impressed with this. Um, okay. So... I want to thank everybody uh, for coming. Um, so let's do a QA. Anybody have any questions? So, so this is a Raspberry Pi. So this is a this is a computer. It's a full computer. It can do anything that pretty much any computer you use does. It's just small. Um, it's not as powerful probably. In some cases, it might be uh, or more. But basically, this is a single board computer, an SBC. Right. This happens to be a Raspberry Pi. Uh, the manufacturer is Raspberry. They were the first to come out with. All right. in, your, um, in your official SkyMiner, it's a different manufacturer, right? It's a R5. I'll leave it there with the brands and stuff. But basically, yeah, a Pi is a single board computer. That's an SBC. Now, uh, an SBC, generally, uh, people that are, in, that are into these kind of things, like SBCs, they know is like this size, right? It's just a little computer that's about this size. And... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Other than that, it works just like any other computer. Oh, the only thing is, mm, the operating systems are a little different. Most, it's mostly Linux, but there is uh, there actually is a Windows IoT for the SBCs, for the Pis, um, and other uh, SBCs. Um, but yeah, basically just a little computer. Powerful. Now they're powerful. They're, they're getting more and more powerful. Now we have, uh, the, the ones that are coming out now, the Raspberry Pi 4, like, uh, they come with four gigs of memory and a uh, pretty good processor, uh, the ARM processor. That's, another, that's an important point, too, that uh, I just realized. So another reason why um, the decision was made to go with, these, uh, with the Raspberry Pis is because of the ARM chip. This is a security, this is a security thing. If you, if you recall, there was an issue with Intel, okay, with, uh, well, let's just say, in the process of manufacturing, there's potential access, remote access or vulnerabilities into certain chips. Okay, I'll leave it there. I don't want to get too deep into that. Uh, but the ARM chips don't have that problem. Right? So from a security standpoint, that's the I, I some people might ask the question, some people have, why go with these, you know, eight of these small little computers in there? There's a reason why. You put eight of these things together, guess what you have? You have eight gigs of throughput. That's one thing. The second thing is you have very secure boards. The, the most secure computer uh, boards that you have in the industry right now. And they're getting better and more powerful. There's a RISB. Uh, RISB is another thing that's coming. Not really relevant to this per se, but perhaps you know, that could be an architecture that we go to a hardware platform in the, uh, in the future. But uh, to answer your question, yeah, Pies are just little computers. Right? So, I have, uh, wait, I have another question. Oh, sorry, yeah. Your monthly rate. A monthly rate? No, no, and that's the beautiful thing. This is open source. This is entirely open source, right? I mean, and, and this this development has been going on. I mean, with you know Skycoin and the blockchain and Obelisk, it's 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 a very long term thing. We're talking about you know ten, nine, ten years, something like that. But over the last four years, um, there you know we've had hardware development and also um, uh, like what do you call it? Uh, 
a lot of open source. It's all open source. And th there's a lot of projects. The idea is to, to keep fostering this open source community. I mean, it, this whole project was born out of open source. Cryptocurrency itself was born out of open source. But what you have to understand is Skycoin is also a platform, too. But we want to keep that platform as, as you know, we want to keep it open source. Always. So there is no, there is no fee. Can I elaborate on that just yeah, a little bit? So, this Skyminer has eight little computers in it. And this Skyminer, if you choose to uh, participate in building the network, this Skyminer will sit somewhere in your home, maybe on a bookshelf, it's very small, um, and be plugged in to an antenna on your roof. These antenna will communicate with each other and create the mesh web independent of the current internet. So this hardware is eight little computers and essentially what this does, it's, it, it builds the, the it, this is the processing power of the decentralized censorship free internet. So this can sit on your desk or your bookshelf and it's connected to an antenna on your roof, which communicates with other people in your community and creates the independent decentralized censorship free internet. Uh, I think the ISM network does relay, and they already have antennas, and also the Raspberry Pi network does relay. I mean, you can talk about GPUs. And you know, like eCash using only memory chip. It does use the CUDA port. I'm sorry, what did you say? E eCash? eCash. Oh, eCash, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, caching mm -hmm. for Ethereum. So those CUDA ports uh, can be used for, I don't know, like uh, video streaming services or other. Yeah, that, uh, so absolutely. you can make extra money out of not only mining Ethereum, which not going to be mine, but very soon, because it's going to be Ethereum 2.0, uh, it's going to be proof of stake. Sure. It's not yeah. going to be proof of work anymore. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, I mean, think the, the question. Yeah, the question is uh, what is the point of this uh, eight Raspberry Pis? You can put just one Raspberry Pi instead of eight. That, that, right, exactly, right. This is just. Because it doesn't have extra processing power. It's like you just put. Uh, five, uh, uh, you know, wristwatches. No, 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 no. But you're asking, no, 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 no. But, but you're asking the point. I have a five, I guess five, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, 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 but that's not, no, because the bandwidth. You gotta remember, this is, the, the, the point of this is Skywire. The Sky Miners, so for the networking, we have eight gigabit network adapters. It's not the only point, but I mean, you understand that it's like high, high, high bandwidth. What's that? Eight gigabit network, what, what is it? Yeah, each board has a gig network. Eight gigabit for big population. What is, what is the oh, eight sorry. gigabit? What is the eight gigabit? I mean, so the, the, the speed of what? The bandwidth or? Correct. The, the bandwidth of what? Network. The Skywire network. This, this radio, the radio network, eight oh, gigabit. gigabit. I, I think you know this uh, eight gigabit and this eight Raspberry Pi. It's like I don't know. This is some of the technology is not useful for me. It's like I don't know. So your phone, your phone will never use uh, Wi-Fi. No, 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 no. Because this doesn't only have to run over Wi-Fi. Uh, but they should work together in like a Bluetooth. Use, uh, it's not device. even Wi-Fi. It's a Wi-Fi. I mean, there, there's a, okay, so just so you understand, there's a greater conversation to have here about Skywire. So th there is some aspect of it about building the network quickly. So that's where the wireless comes in, because you can easily do that. However, there's something else. So in the future, we're going, we're promoting people to open uh, more like a data center type thing. So in a commercial application, we would have uh, like a colo in a data center, have a rack full of, uh, Equipment, it doesn't have to be five. So do you have like community all around the world to build this network? Correct. Already. What sort of licensing for uh, for this one? Yeah. For, for I'm sorry, licensing for what? Use for uh, frequency for uh, your radio. No, I mean uh, 
in this country, I mean, it's, uh, you know, you can only operate 5458, I'm sorry, 2.4, 5.8, and under a lot. But only for home use. If you use That's correct. Data, sure. You should, you should have a license. Sure, sure, sure. But you have to understand, just as a, just as a consumer grade, uh, as a consumer grade networking application, that, that's fine. If people want to go into a higher band, that's different. You want, there's FCC, obviously there's FCC regulations and um, you have to apply if you want to use a higher bandwidth frequency range. That's a totally different animal. Wait, but I think you have a big problem. <laughs> you are trying to use the centralized uh, mobile operator without any license. So, I think it's a big problem. Right, what I'm saying is we're not promoting anybody to do anything outside of license uh, Unlicensed spectrum. So right now we're only working within the Wi-Fi, uh, the Wi-Fi spectrum itself. If somebody wants to go outside of that into a, a different spectrum, that that they have to deal with that. We're not we're not putting out a product that's going to do that. I think it's a good idea, but after a couple hours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure, fair enough. But what I'm saying, you have to understand that we're we're just putting this out there now, and there's a lot of there's a lot of development behind it, and I mean. If I had more time, I could sit down and give you a lot of detailed explanations. But yeah, I, I hear what you're saying. But yeah, I mean, regulations, FCC. Remember that it's worldwide. So it's like in, in the US, we do have FCC. And you know, that this is something that's actively discussed in the community so people understand that, you know, yeah, I mean, if you're using equipment that's going over one watt and it's outside the frequency range, you're, you're potentially you know, having an issue there. But you know, this is meant to be on a consumer Wi Fi. Especially considering that you can do long range Wi Fi. It's not it's not like you can't do that. I mean, here in the city we have some challenges, but in, you know, once you step outside the city, the metropolitan areas, you can very easily transmit a Wi Fi network for miles. That's not an issue. For me it's hard to understand how to send a signal, for example, from New York to Little Mont, for example. Oh, I mean Wi Fi network. Oh, but you understand that like you don't necessarily have to go Wi Fi from here all the way over to there. You can do a basically a backhaul. And then on the other end, right? So I mean, you don't have to do wireless to every single point. And this network isn't going to be only wireless in the future. The reason why we're going wireless now is because it's a lot easier for you to connect to your neighbor's wireless, right? We're not going to run a cable from your your home to your neighbor's home. That doesn't work. So now, just to provide a little bit, if you want to enlarge. mind that Skywire can operate across any network. It still has its anonymity and it still has its own protocol. It's a layer running over the same that network. That's how it's running right now on Sentinel. But uh, giving the public keys uh, for, uh, for IPs, yes, yeah. it's a good idea. It, thank you. But, yeah. But, I mean, listen, it's a, it's a totally new nation. Right? So, um, now the only caveat to that is of course, this means that it don't, that really only works on the Skywire network, right? If you try to link the Skywire network with some other type of network, whatever it is, it's not really going to work. I mean, it'll, yeah, it really just wouldn't work. Not via application. Uh, anybody else? That is how it works. Basically, like I, like I explained, we're using a SOC 5 proxy, and then that basically puts that network out there. So the, Sky, the Skywire protocol, Skywire routing, is running over that SOC 5 proxy. So let's say I have this node running. Uh, someone wants to connect it. How do they do that? Um, there's a couple of ways. You find them inadvertently. Or if, let's say like you know somebody, right? So let's say your friend or somebody you know says, hey, I've got one for you. You want to connect to me? Just ask them for their app key. You can go into your console, okay, and you can actually add that node. And you can mark it with a label so you know it's you know, whoever you want. 
the, the whatever you want. And you, can, and you can actually save that connection. Right now you can do it. But you can save that connection so that every time you start up, your, you know, your system, your mind, it's going to automatically connect to that. So they can use the network if I allow them, basically. I'm trying to see like the point of entry for someone who's not familiar with the, uh, with the network. Probably, the probably for someone else. else. Like you would offer it to them, they'd be like, okay, sir, I'll do this. Okay, but someone who's not familiar with this, there's no way for them to kind of just stumble on, stumble upon it and, and start like, oh, this is interesting. It's like, let me see. I mean, I, I admit that, you know, like for somebody who's not really tech savvy, I mean, it's like, well, what does it mean? But I think that when you look at the, I guess like what I'm trying, the message I'm trying to convey is the benefit. So the, th the idea is like, do you want to, I mean like the, the, everything that they're talking about in the news right now is about data and what to do with it. So, they, so we can talk about, oh, are we going to have high bandwidth? Are we going to have streaming? Are we going to have a Skywire version of Netflix? Maybe. But remember, we're in the beginning. Yeah. What about when the internet was in the beginning and you were using AOL and it was 56K? Right. Uh, but we weren't complaining then, were we? I know. Yeah. So, that, so, so to, be, to be fair, to be fair, we're in the 56K stage right now. But we're getting there. And pretty soon, it's going to get to the point where you know, we're going to start seeing more bandwidth, reliably, and then things are going to start happening. Now, if you know that you can get on the Skywire network and reach people, and that bandwidth is sufficient enough for you to run a website, or run a web application, or just even just a mobile, from your mobile, just have it connect to a database that's on that network. If you happen to be on the network, fine. Right? I mean, you can, if you want it, you can set up a, a Skywire network and add a Wi-Fi access to it. And why can't you connect your phone to that? You can. So what I'm saying is, like, as long as you can get into that namespace or you can get onto that network, a local Skywire network, you can gain access to those things. Right? If now, in the future, you would expect that we, you know, like right now, there's not really a way to put in like the actual application key into the mobile, right, in the mobile app. But that could be created. Remember, these. So these are the ideas that are going on right now in development. Can you speak to the benefits of using Skywire, such as privacy? Um, yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, privacy, I mean, Skywire makes you private because why? Because nobody can track you. There's no record of where your traffic is, right? So, and, and then you can't be sniffed, right? I mean, you're using a stock by proxy. You're not going to get sniffed out. Right? And even if you did, I mean, the encryption on top of that is you know, your, your data is safe, right? So, um, but how do you, like, who has access to your data? So, for example, your current ISP, like, I'm not going to name names, but, like, if you live in New York, you have two, maybe three major ISPs, right? I mean, they, they have all your traffic, right? I mean, even if they're not watching every single thing you do, they're... You know, they, they have at least on some level the ability to have, like, they have some visibility into what you've done. Now, does that matter? Usually, I mean, usually not. I mean, in some cases, but what are those cases? Like, if there was a crime committed? But what if they're just watching you all the time? And then how, how much are they watching you? Okay? And then, is it everything, or is it just a little bit? Is they, do they know everything about you, your personal information? Do they know your password? How do you know? How do you know that your ISP doesn't know your password for everything you've done? Are you sure they don't know that? What I'm saying is if you use Skywire, there's no way that can happen because they wouldn't be able to identify you unless you told somebody what your ASCII was publicly. But what, that's the same thing as if you told somebody what your, say, Bitcoin address was. They would know who you were because you told them publicly. So privacy-wise, that, you know, that's what it is. So, so I just had a few questions and then from a different perspective, one of which that the Skyform. So basically the miner is going to get rewarded with Skyform hours Correct. and Skycoin. Right? Sky, uh, Skycoin hours. Just hours. Just hours, yeah. They, so the paper package, so okay, so for example, like you have Skycoin. <laughs> what about the Skycoin itself then, which is created on the exchanges? That's going to be good for services on the platform, right? Just yeah, just, just like Who's services is it good for? Is it for the other, is it going to be for the other projects that are going to be housed on Skywire? Well, it's, it's up to them. You got to understand, Skycoin itself, 
is like any other currency, it's usable anywhere, anywhere on the regular internet. You could, you know, like just like cryptocurrency exchange, right? So the coin hours, likewise, will be on exchange, but it's going to be somewhat limited. Uh, but in the ecosystem, it's going to be more. Well, first of all, the paper packet that's going to happen through coin hours. It's not going to happen through shops. However, you will be able to trade your coin hours to shops. So the monetization happens there. Because obviously, if you couldn't. If there's no way to bring that back out of that towards the fiat or something like that, then we really couldn't call it monetization, right? Um, so, until, until there's a future where we don't use fiat. But basically, yeah, you're rewarded in coin out in sky coin hours, not sky coin. Now, how do people you anybody can create it's not only in the ecosystem, no. To answer your question. It can be used outside the ecosystem, as long as there's an, an like an exchange or a website or an e-commerce that supports it on the outside, like on the clear. Currently there are things. I mean, you have an exchange. Currently, and there are. Them. Correct. Got, but there is currently no other use. You're talking about a use, economic use case for coin hours? For, you know, what well, either coin hours or, or sky coin. Correct. But where we're, that's being worked on. It's the same thing with Bitcoin. It's like the Bitcoin developers don't go out there and make you know, e commerce platforms, they just develop Bitcoin. Well, people can buy pizza with Bitcoin. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's the idea, yeah, though. But, but what I'm saying is, like, but what do people do? People said, "Hey, I want to make a casino game and book Bitcoin. I want to do this." So, so, so other other that, 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 So the next question then that relates to okay, so now you develop this internet, this alternate alternative internet, mm -hmm. right? And you're going to allow financial transactions on it, right? Correct. Which now, at least in the U, how do you think the U.S. government's going to allow you to have an internet? That goes that's going to be going through the United States. How does that make the U.S. I don't know what kind of the U.S. you get that. Well, that's the same kind of question, but a different question. Have you thought about how are you going to, how are you going to get approval? I mean, look at how Facebook got so much problems because of the end, because of the noisy customer rule and the other issues related to privacy. You're not going to be able to demonstrate you know where those financial transactions are occurring on your your alternative internet. Why do you think the government's going to allow that to be utilized as an alternative internet here among households in the United States? Um, that's a conversation that will be had when the time comes. I mean, it, we're not even at that point yet. So, yeah, it'll come. I mean, at some point, and we don't know who that's going to be. It could be SEC, or it could be another agency. We don't know. But when the time comes to have that conversation, yeah, we're ready. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to not do it. You know what I mean? So it's like, this is what we're going to do. And I think when well, we get suggest to... Well, shouldn't, but I mean... No, 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 no. Sure, sure. But about. what I'm saying is like, I, but I think that, in my opinion, timing-wise, if we could fast forward a little bit, when we get to that point, I think that a lot of the dust is, is going to have already settled. Because this isn't going to happen tomorrow. But I mean, it's also not going to happen, like, it's not going to take forever for it to happen. But at some point in the not-so-distant future, I think people are going to calm down, industry-wise. And you know, with uh, things like you know the, the SEC and uh, you know how they're classifying these things, whether they're assets or securities or whatever, whatever they decide. Um, now, uh, if they say, well, it's a utility token, so we're going to classify it a certain way, that's their decision. I mean, it's not like we go to them and say, here's what we want. I mean, they come to us and they say, hey, here's what we want, right? So, so that's it's more like they dictate when that happens. And how far along are you as a community? Is it more abroad? Than Yeah, if you if you come into the community, you'll see, you'll be surprised. I mean, it's it's uh, in all honesty, it's one of the most active cryptocurrency communities that I've seen. Genuinely active, like you know, we, we do a lot to try to keep out the bots and stuff like that. Um, we really try to keep it really. We try to curate it to a point where it's like just real people, even if they're fluttering. We don't really care that much unless they're just hammering us. But like, if we know there's like fake kind of accounts, bot type people, we get them out. We have so, a Telegram community network of 50 plus active rooms of people all over the world. Yeah, that's a good point. We have we, community meetup rooms community. in 50 plus cities around the world. Okay. We have at our at our max, we've had 10,000 nodes online just in testnet in less than a year of testnet. So there's a lot of community adoption all over the world to answer your question. And as for economic use case for uh, Skycoin, um, Skywire is the built-in economic use case um, to create demand for, for, for the coin. Um, I think that's 
a, a great point to make because we think, you, you know, um, as a part of the general uh, population who considers a cryptocurrency, it's difficult to like understand, okay, what is this for? Like, what can I use it to pay my bills or my rent or whatever? Um, and that, that's sort of what Skywire is attempting to close, close the gap in, to create a built-in economic use case for the coin so that there's demand for it and an actual reason to, to have it. And so Skywire is that reason. It's, it's, it's the first built-in reason, but to another point that you made, there is actually, uh, um, speaking to the strength of our community, a community member actually built an e-commerce platform that accept, accepts coin hours for services. So that does exist, yeah. And, and there's more of that to come, but Skywire is the first built-in economic use case for, for Skycoin coin. coin. I see the term utility as a miner, as a build provider, even monetize it some of it. Uh, but if you want to mine, you can mine and make money another way. But how do you know that this can actually be good as a currency? And that, what is the utility of that in that case? What, I mean, how do you know you're going to be successful in getting people to off board or go into a new business that can make it useful long term? We might be early. But um, governments are increasing uh, control and censorship uh, everywhere. Um, China, for example, has built an entire um, internal internet to where they can shut off the traffic to all outside sources and completely control the propaganda with inside. And essentially, the global internet is the US internet at this point. And so we may be early for that, and there, I, I mean, it would be speculation if I were to say that demand would be would increase over time, but I would I would venture to say that because because of the control and restriction and censorship um, uh, that's happening and it's very real. Yep. So can you still communicate with the old internet? Like yeah. The yeah. Internet uh, absolutely. So let me let me just give you a, a just a short breakdown. So um, yeah, it is a challenge. So um, yeah, we, what we're doing is. We are preparing to put a network out. Uh, it was something like a, a beta type thing. So we're doing it internally, and then we'll get to the next step, and then we'll sort of public beta that. Uh, so we'll, we'll pick some people, you know, people that are generally interested, and then you know we'll continue that. And that's how this network is going to grow. Now, um, as we move forward, we'll get to a point where it's like, okay, you know, we're really at the point now where we can open it up. So. We have to grow the network, and it is a challenge, but that's sort of, it's, okay, so that's why I came to Skycoin. I came to Skycoin to actually build out the Skywire part of it, actually build the network. Not just in New York, but the reason why we chose New York is because it's, people see it as sort of like a beacon for success. Global financial capital um, population here, there's a lot of like dense population here. There, there's a lot of different factors why we chose New York as the first city to roll out. Um, for marketing reasons um, and, and so forth, but that's that's why we're here, and that's the plan. This is the first city. Where can you put the antenna? I mean, I, I live in New York, I have a balcony, and I have a roof. Where no, that, that's better. You know why? You know why that's better? Yeah. If you actually have balcony access, it's better. As long as you're, as long as you feel comfortable putting something sort of out there. Right. But you know, you lose about two decibels of signal. To the Can't the you can feel. You know, listen, like like a window like this, we can put it at the window. What happens though is that you're you're gonna lose about two decibels of signal through the glass, right? Obviously, if you go through every time you go through concrete, you're losing about thirty percent of it. But yeah, I mean, you can do that. So like, you have the, the idea is that here's the way it works. If you tell me, hey Ty, I want to get started with this. What do we do? I'm gonna say, okay, privately we'll exchange uh, the location information, right? So you know, we keep that stuff private. But basically, we can find a way to get a point-to-point -point connection between us. This is how I'm doing it. This is how we are doing it. So the idea is that we're trying to bring people together. So as we get these, this web of connections, it, it will be somewhat small in the beginning. But the idea is we get a community of people that are connected, interconnected. Now we're running the Skywire network between us. The other part of your question was uh, access to the, the clear net, the internet. Yeah, sure. As long as we have one of the nodes, any node that's acting as a, that, that you know, 
just has internet access on it, it's going to function as an endpoint. As long as you know you're like you're allowing it to the firewall. So if that traffic can come in to that node and it's on the same network, yeah, you have access to it. No question. Uh, earlier you were talking about Tor. Um, is the network also going to be allowed to have people develop like uh, websites yeah. like Tor has yeah. onion websites? Uh, I mean, well, okay. I can't really answer that because. If the question is, will literally Tor be compatible on the Skywire network? Um, I, I just really can't answer that. I, I don't. No, 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 no. You will be able to serve websites across the message, yes. Right. Uh, yeah, that was my question. Yeah, the yeah. question is like, can you serve yeah websites, web applications, databases, really anything that you would do on the regular internet, you could do on Skywire. Okay. The way you access them is slightly different, right? But yeah, you can do all the same things. Okay. Yeah, on each node. So the idea is that you know on each node you would have a separate separate application. You should I think you should uh, reduce your settlement with uh, the bit because you should use uh, CPU NAS and RAM for your application. Well, it can be done. What I'm saying is like you don't have to have that kind of equipment. This is like what we recommend, and right now in the current like remember you gotta understand we're providing subsidized rewards. So in our own internal testing of our own product. We want this kind of equipment. It's because we're doing active testing using this kind of equipment. If you want to turn up like a Dell server, okay? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you want to buy a five, ten thousand dollar server and churn it out, sure. But could it, if I want to run the app application on this network, I should put this application inside mine, is it? Well, you don't have to. As long as that node, whether it's a, a Pi and a Miner or any, as long as that node is connected to the Skywire network, yeah. How, uh, how uh, our users can connect to my application? Um, I mean, they connect via your application. So that application, when you start up on the Skywire network, as soon as you so you have to register with the network basically. You have to register it on Skywire. Once you do that, it's going to turn it up. It's going to get its. You're going to. It's going to generate an application key. So if I could show you, I would. But basically, the process is you'll have like a, a configuration generated, and then in that configuration, you have an application key, and it'll say the port that it's running on, and then basically you're going to access that via that application key, right? And in fact, actually, when you're putting it, when you're going to connect to the other node, you just put in your application key. It's going to be able to find it. So instead of going to something something.com, you go to the application key. Now, one thing I will tell you is that. The very, there's something that a lot of people are asking about, and it is being talked about, being developed, is a, a, a way to handle the domain space. So uh, kind of like the next level DNS. All right, so that is in the work, it is being talked about. We don't have it yet, so yes, you're gonna have to use the application key. But in the future, there's a very high likelihood that you won't have to use application keys anymore. We can actually link application keys to uh, its namespace name. So um, currently, my only Sky coin is in New Orleans. It generates Sky hours, which we can use to use the network. Correct. Is that currently the only utility for for the actual token? Like, is it a utility token? With at the moment, okay. So at the moment, uh, Sky coin hours are used for uh, trans to, it's basically your, your transaction engine. That's what makes Skycoin uh, not only fast, but basically free transactions in that sense, because it's just using the coin hours, which are generated. Uh, so let's say you have like a thousand Sky in your wallet every hour. Let's say you left it in there for a day. Well, at the end of the day, you have 1,000 Sky, you have 24,000 coin hours. So the, obviously like, if, if we're doing all these things that we're talking about, everything that I've said, you really are going to need a lot of these, right? So there's going, so the value of these is going to be strictly, it's going to be within the ecosystem mostly, because on the outside, it's like, I, I don't know, like, if, if it was a penny, it's, I mean, you couldn't possibly do a, pack, a penny of packets, right? I mean, you, to, I mean, to answer probably, your question, you just it, is, website, you go broke. it is the current use case, yes. 
the Skyliner. Let's say I were to get it now. Like every year there's a new iPhone. Like what's like what's a future generation kind of future proof? Like what happens if there's a better equipment now to make the Skyliner? Like what would that process be like? Well, if there's better equipment, we use it. Right, but like I have my Skyliner already. Like yeah, so. But I think Caleb, I think you can answer because you know this will be forwards compatible. There will be uh, further iterations, of course, but there's we don't we don't have planned obsolescence for this, so to speak. You know, this will this will continue to run. This is uh, scalable into the future. So if you make the investment, you'll be able to use it going forward. Okay. Or or you can build your own. Well, that's why we're trying to push out mainnet as soon as possible. If the internet gets, if the current internet gets shut down? Well, basically, like if, if let's say, uh, you know, my ISP decides to shut me down because I don't like the network, right? But the whole idea of behind Skywire is that we are free of that kind of censorship and-, and Well, actually, network. okay, to answer your question, the, the wireless aspect of it, that's out. So for example, we're, we're putting this wireless network out in the wild. So we're literally providing a Skywire network out in the wild. Like, you know, in some place, somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully near you as soon as possible, but you go outside and some way you're gonna find access. Like, it is, like we're gonna, like, I, I don't know exactly where, that's what I'm saying, but we're gonna start building it out there in the wild. So as we start growing this network and it starts getting closer to you, you will have access to it wirelessly. Now, if you want a faster wired connection or something like that, that can be done. But in order to grow this network quickly, we, we're going to wireless stuff. And the idea is that, okay, so let's, say, let's just say we did the entire New York, right? Every single person that lives in New York has a Skyliner and an antenna, and they're all talking to each other. No internet, no clear internet, right? So they say, hey, you wanna talk to people in Philly? All right, well, uh, go through the internet, do a, not, not the internet, but do a backhaul from New York over to Philly, and on the other end, turn it up wirelessly. Yeah. Now build out Philly, give everybody in Philly. A sky miner and an antenna. If you could do that, then theoretically you would bridge these two cities, even though Philly's talk, everybody in Philly's talking to each other wirelessly, everyone in New York is talking to each other wirelessly, but they can also talk to each other, the two cities. But that's happening by way of the backlog. And that's a that's a future, that's so part of the future. Plan. Some of the infrastructure that the current internet is built on, um, like the submarine cables, aren't owned by anybody. So you can rent out space on those to like, for example, like reach between continents. And so that's, that's the plan for that. I, I don't remember your question, but um, the idea, and it wouldn't take everybody in New York City owning a Sky Miner and an antenna to make it accessible to everybody. It would, you know, it, it wouldn't take that many people to actually create a live mesh net. But the idea is for people to be able to take out their phone, get on the Skywire Wi-Fi and pay for bandwidth in coin hours directly from their phone or their device and access uh, the network that way. I have one more thing to put in there. So just from a purely mon monetary perspective, like I get it, like some people it's just like, where's the money? And that's fine. So let me tell you how that works, okay? So we have this system going, we have a network, it's, it, let's just say it's going, we're at that point already where, you know, coin hours are just pumped, all right? You make a little money there. Okay, so just build a business around it. Become an ISP. Start providing it to other people. Hey, have you heard about it? You gotta get on it. And so you can actually start building out your own network. And remember, those coin hours come to you because all those people are passing through your, your route, your network. Okay? We have time for maybe one more question. Yeah. I got a really good question. Um, my friend Kim Dotcom was rated in uh, New Zealand for running Mega Upload. Okay, uh, how do you see this uh, in regards to people using it for like piracy or illegal content? I mean, the reality is that there's a choice. Do you want privacy or not? And even if you choose that privacy isn't that important. 
you may still believe that other people have the right to it. And so whatever, wherever you are on that, whatever side of the fence you're on, if you believe that privacy is a right, then that, that kind of argument, it kind of doesn't hold water. The reason why is because if somebody, there are reasons for a lot of people to have privacy. For example, why did the Tor network become popular? It was, why was it created in the first place? It was created for journalists and uh, basically law enforcement. Uh, right, Tor was created by the Navy. Right, they could be private when they were out in the world, they could communicate privately and not be harassed or, or identified. That was the whole thing, keeping your identity secret. So we have to have a mechanism for that. I understand governments don't like it, but there has to be some cooperation. Eventually, as we move forward, as, a, as humanity moves forward, we have to have some cooperation with governments where it's like, look, we want our privacy. They have to, I mean, there has to be a halfway point there. There has to be a, a somewhere in the middle of the road where we meet and we say, okay, we're allowed to have this. And the idea is that we're just going to have a way to have privacy. Now, if you do something and you expose yourself, that's your own, I mean, it's your own doing, right? But I believe you should be able to have privacy. And so that, to answer your question the best I can, um, that's, the, that's the hill that I'll die on. So if I have to, wherever I have to sit and talk to somebody and explain why we're doing what we're doing and why I shouldn't have to suffer or pay consequences for doing it, just simply by giving people anonymity or an option to do that, I mean, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to stand in that group of people and explain to them why. And it's just a principle that I believe in, that's why. Right. Yeah, so some... I'm sorry, we have one more question. You sure? Yeah, probably. Yeah? Okay. So, part of the vision of Skywire is to create a, uh, a, a, a censorship-free network, like we've said directly and alluded to a lot here. Um, and for, for me, uh, my interest in involvement in the project is as, an ad, as a freedom of speech advocate. Um, there's a lot of censorship and um, uh, control happening through uh, corporations, institutions, um, governments, um, big uh, tech giants, and so on. So that's, that's my interest in uh, pushing, pushing the project forward, and New York is the first place that Skywire uh, will be rolled out and deployed. We'll be having more of these meetups at the Blockchain Center here uh, in the coming months. I want to thank you all for uh, attending. Um, the Senate is going to be uh, closing pretty soon here, so it's time for us to wrap up. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate you coming, and uh, please come back.
Open source, the software is open source, okay. everything. But like for example, like with this, like if you want to get, if you want to like.